Super happy with the beers coming out so far. Big focus on craft beer. Really excited for people to come check it out. Like really good pub food, but using some local ingredients from the community. Welcome to Poking the Mountains Podcast. I'm Jim Hamill, season three, episode 20. The newest stop along the Pocono Beverage Trail is right on the railroad tracks. Anyone who's watched PTN or listened to the podcast knows I love a good brewery. There's always a great story behind the scenes in between the brew tanks, with the servers or the kitchen staff, and especially within the space that provides a way for us all to connect. It's exactly what's happening at the new Runaway Train Brewery in Honesdale, fresh on the scene with some great craft beer and a great menu to go with it, plus lots of fun in store from live entertainment to future expansions. More on that in a bit. The Poconos is a year-round destination for millions with 2,400 square miles of forests, mountains, lakes, and rivers with iconic family resorts and historic downtowns. It's the perfect getaway. You can always find out more at PoconoMountains.com or watch PTN, the Pocono Television Network, streaming live 24-7. Now, back to the episode. Runaway Train Brewery officially opened this month to some fanfare. with a presidential rail car right outside its doors. The new brew house is right on the tracks where the Storebridge line runs excursions from Honesdale to Holly and beyond. Enjoy this discussion with some of the folks helping to conduct this thing full steam ahead. Enjoy. Hi everyone, it's Jim Hamill with Pocono Mountains Podcast sitting here, or shall I say standing, bar side with Justin Genslinger with Settlers Hospitality. He has just helped transform this former brewery into a brand spanking new brewery, Runaway Train in Honesdale, PA, just off Chapel Street, just off Main Street. And I'm glad to have him here on the podcast because we're slinging beers. We're making great food here. And it's a great entertainment venue as well. Justin, thanks for joining us on the podcast. What's the excitement level here at Runaway Train? Yeah, it's always beer 30 here at Runaway Train, Jim. And uh, we're having a great time. Um, the Pocono Beverage Trail has really helped inspire you know, the creation of this brewery. And um, so we've taken what was a brewery in town and tried to give it a different style, different approach, uh, big focus on crap beer, on like really good pub food, but using some local ingredients from the community and uh, just having a great time, good entertainment and not taking life too seriously. And just in the background of you right now, I can see Charles hard at work. Charles is the guy. Charles is the guy. He's a secret in the sauce kind of guy. He's in there looking at all um, the brewing equipment right now because it's it's a full-blown brewing operation you guys have here. Yeah, f- uh, full-blown 10-barrel system. So Charles Mills is our uh, brewmaster. He's doing a great job. Got a handful of, of beer on tap already. And uh, and we're not going to stop here. You know, we're, we'll have the restaurant going. And uh, we do have in our membership group quite a few food and beverage outlets. So uh, probably going to see this beer on tap all over town. So that means like it's not just going to be served here at Runaway Train. Eventually, people will see it other places that they dine. Settlers has a lot of different properties throughout the Pocono Mountains as well, whether it's Lakeside, whether it's downtown Holly. But here in Honesdale, this is kind of like kicking you guys off into a new endeavor here. The vibe in town has got to be great. You've had a lot of people turn out to your grand opening, to even the soft openings was crushed. So like there's a huge demand for that, and especially right here in downtown Honesdale. Yeah, I mean, the people of Honesdale, the town, the borough, the GHP have just been tremendous partners in welcoming us to town. I think in our in the microclimate here, we're known more in the Hawley side of the Wayne County and Lake region. But um, town has just been fabulous. Honesdale's got a great vibe going right now. And uh, we're just thrilled to be a part of it. And uh, the brewery made a lot of sense for investment purposes, for economic development and a way for us to plant a flag in Honesdale and to expand our presence in the community. And I, I've known, just as you look at a lot of things that Sellers does, does it, you don't do it anything but right. And so your team worked really hard to get this to the point of looking the way that it does. Describe this aesthetic in here. It's really relaxing, but it's also you know pretty refined as well with a lot of artwork around. Yeah, I mean, our approach to the brewery is it's an industrial setting, which is perfect for a brewery. Uh, at the same time, we wanted to add a little bit of refinement on the style, but uh, make no bones about it, it's still a brew pup. And so, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit more refined than some of its elements, and uh, which makes for a comfortable setting. And that's really what people want. So we're taking a, the good bones of the industrial 
uh, modern kind of look and feel, giving it a little bit of warmth, and then uh, really all about letting the team do their thing in terms of food and beverage. And so Honesdale has a train, Holly has the train, it connects both towns, but that's really the connection here too, is that the history in town inspires, you know, the the names of the brews, the the um, the name of the brewery itself, yeah. but also then to where you guys could potentially take this, you know, when, when there are trains where you could possibly have a beverage as well. Yeah, it just so happens to be the Storebridge line right next door and uh, part of Honesdale's roots in the train industry. And it's just everyone loves to talk about it. Who doesn't like seeing a vintage train? And uh, you will be able to take that uh, excursion rail with a beer in your hand down the river sometime in 2024. So we're excited about partnering with the train system here, telling the train story, and really incorporating that. I mean, it's the authentic fabric of Honesdale's DNA. And uh, so why not? Why not make that the theme for the brewery? In your short time open so far, have really tried to put an emphasis on blowing the walls off of this with like live music. And that's yeah. really the kind of vibe I think that people want. They want to have not just their beer, but they also want to pair it with great food and great live entertainment too. Yeah, I mean, the full experience, you know, isn't complete without live entertainment. I will say that, you know, our company is a tremendous supporter of the arts and live music everywhere. Uh, our partner, Volgold Media, is just fabulous supporter of, of live music all around the region. And so it's a great combination and it really completes the experience here at the brewery is to hear some rock and roll with your beer. Yeah. And outside the the artists are making a lot of great uh, enhancements to the outside as well. Jeff George has done a ton of murals throughout the Northern Poconos here. And now this is another place for that as well, too. So that that's something people will recognize right off the bat. Yeah. I mean, if you've been through the Northern Pocono Mountains, you might not know Jeff George individually, but you know his work because he is so unique with the murals and the settings that he does. So we're thrilled to have him painting the skin and the outside ink of this style brewery. And uh, I know that you probably can't go into much detail, but there is a second floor here too. So maybe at a certain point, people can start to understand that that's going to be utilized for different aspects as well. Yeah, the initial launch of Runaway Train is an indoor experience on this main floor with the brewery. Uh, there is 4,000 square feet upstairs that's unaccounted for. And I, I think there will be some announcements soon. We have some applications in, but, uh, and there's also some tremendous outdoor space. And what doesn't go great with the brewery also is sitting on a deck or out in a courtyard, um, sort of beer garden style. And so we're working on two different expansion efforts, both vertically and outside. And, um, Part of that is to incorporate families and pets. I'll end it with that. All right. That sounds something right up my alley. I've got a family. i got pets. You might find, <laughs> me, you might find me here quite often uh, beyond just this segment. Uh, it's, it's not too far from where I live. I, I'm a big proponent of you know the downtown living, the downtown kind of vibe that's, that's happening here, and also the beverage trail too, right? Like There's so many great things that are happening with breweries throughout the Pocono Mountains, and that's raising the profile of what people can look forward to here. Yeah, I mean, the Pocono Beverage Show, I think, will end up being one of the northernmost spots. So uh, not a bad place to end for your meal on that beverage trail, and we'll yeah. say that as well. But uh, and along the theme with the, you know, sort of pets and family friendly is you can come and be in the doghouse book literally and figuratively next year. <laughs> that, that's where I tend to live myself. But uh, you guys got full service liquor here. You have your own beers that you brew you've got some guest taps as well that's curated by people who know what they're doing as well yeah I, it's just an experience i think that is raising the bar for what the expectation is for a brewery and brew house saloon if you will too that this is it, it's it's um it's really welcoming but it's also got that thing that'll leave you wanting to come back for more and let me tell you just one thing about the tap system here is it, it is all about the beer first and foremost uh, but to make the experience complete for uh, for others, right? So not everyone is into the beer experience, although I am. Yeah. And so uh, we also have wine on tap, we have a f along with the full liquor license. Uh, but we're also featuring our partners at Mocha Origin in terms of having cold brew coffee on tap, uh, Ritter's local farm of having hard cider on tap. So we're trying to support the local ecosystem and our local partnerships in addition to an experience that goes above and beyond beer. But make no mistake about it, it starts with beer. And I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up the fact that 
just in in the short time that you've been open, I've been here. Your staff is second to none. They they are so uh, exuberant and welcoming to the patrons here that I think that that's another really important piece of what makes the brewery experience so good. So uh, kudos to you guys for having you know the, the the individuals who are here committed to making those experiences great. Yeah, I mean we have a, we have blessed with a great team throughout the company and. Uh, you know, one of our longstanding managers, Jen, is running the brewery for us from the front of the house and has recruited just a great team. A lot of a lot of everybody from local and town. People have been excited about it. And uh, and the, what I hear a lot of the time is from the minute I walk in, I feel welcome. And in hospitality, that's what we do. Perfect. Justin Gensel, your CEO of Settlers Hospitality, operating Runaway Train, Brew House and Saloon right here in Honesdale, Pennsylvania on the Pocono Beverage Trail. Where can you find out more about the brewery online, on social? Absolutely, on social, on Facebook, and also on runawaytrainbrewery.com. Awesome. Justin, thanks again, and uh, appreciate you having us here, not just now, but uh, I'll, I'll be a regular here, I promise. I'm sure you will. Thanks for having us, Jim. All right, thanks. Hey, everyone, Jim Hamill again with Pocono Mountains Podcast, still here at Runaway Train Brewery in Onesdale, Pennsylvania. But now we've switched from the front of the house and a lot of the food and beverage to the main ingredient, and we've got Charles Mills, head brewer here at Runaway Train. Charles, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Tell me what it's like to kind of be here at the ground level of this place. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very, uh, very proud of the space. Very proud of the the transformation we've done in the last couple months. Super happy with the beers coming out so far, and uh, really excited for people to come check it out. What is you you think kind of like your approach to this? Right, like you have experience. You're here now kind of like building upon that experience. What kind of styles, what kind of um, beers do, do you think people should be expecting when they come to Runaway Train? Uh, well, it's, it's really excited to start the, the beer program from the ground up. Um, really just want to focus on quality. Good quality IPAs and lagers is going to be the base of our program. As we get into the, the colder months, we'll go into stouts and porters, but uh, just really want to keep quality up and, and be proud of what we make. Yeah, man, that's the way I move. I kind of go from summer, I want that kind of like hoppy, like lighter type of beer. But once it gets cool outside, give me a darker beer, right? Uh, something with more full body. So do you get experimental? Do you kind of like to stay close and true to like what beer brewing has always been? Or do you like to experiment? Depends on the style of beer. Um, our lager program, I'm trying to keep as true to style as possible. Uh, very traditional Um we're doing a lot of German kind of style beers in the in the lager program. Yeah. Um, any experiment thing will be on the IPAs and the stout side with adjunct and ingredients, um, one-off hops, stuff like that. But kind of a mixture of both depending on the style. So Day Tripper was the first one I had coming in here. And I was very pleased to like sample that right off. It's like some of your first stuff that you're doing here at the brewery. And it's only going to get better. So like that's a great quality beer there. How can you describe like the day trip or two, because I feel like beer people will be like, oh, I'll, I'll rate them on their IPAs. Like that, that's a good quality IPA there with like a strong finish, not too heavy of the ABV or alcohol in there, right? Yeah, we just wanted to make a, a kind of a split between the new hazy IPAs and the old school West Coast. Something down the middle, you can drink every day if you want to. It's it's not overly fruity or overly bitter. I can kind of, kind of cut the difference and... uh just make an all-around drinkable beer. So what got you into brewing? Like, you're a beer fan, obviously, and is that where your love for it started? Yeah, I started home brewing years ago. Uh, you know, the story in my parents' basement, making beer. Um, kind of fell in love with the, the whole hobby. Um, actually got started with a mobile canning company. Um, we'd go around to breweries and can their beer, and then just fell in love with the industry and kept on moving my way up. That's awesome. What do you think about the area, too? You're not from here. But you, you're now spending a lot of time here. What do you think about it? Yeah, yeah, I like it. I moved up from Central Jersey uh, this past spring. Um, I love the the outdoors up here. The, there's a lot of open public land, and and the lake lake's awesome. So, so don't you think that kind of pairs well with the experience? Like when you go out and you kayak or you hike or you bike, you get pretty hungry and thirsty. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason why we call it a day tripper, right? Yeah. yeah. So, like, you're saying, come on in when you're exhausted from all your adventures out there. We're that place where we can refuel you. Yep, absolutely. Yep. That's cool, man. And so, are you looking forward to the different 
things that'll happen here from live entertainment to the potential beer trains and other things here, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be fun to showcase what we do here and all those different aspects. Um, and it's cool that we have a full service bar, the food, it all pairs well. So, yeah. And, uh, you like the food as much as I like the food. It's pretty good food. Absolutely. Man. Yeah. So far so good. And your stuff gets used in that somehow, right? Yes. Uh, they, I think they're making a cheese sauce with the Pilsner when it comes out. And I believe they're using spent greens in the bread. Really? That's pretty tasty stuff, man. I, my kids liked it. My family likes it. So I think you'll be seeing a lot of us here. Pocono Beverage Trail, that's another thing, too, that you can get out on. And you can make multiple stops here throughout the different seasons. You can kind of, like, rack up, you know, check-ins as you're going to different places. So do you think it's kind of cool to be part of this beverage trail now, too, where people can kind of sample stuff all throughout the region? Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. We're at, we're at the very end of the train track, quite literally, so... Uh, you can either start or stop here. It's up to you. I'd recommend stopping and getting some food at the end of the day. That's a good move. All right, cool. Charles Mills, head brewer here at Runaway Train Brewery in Honesdale. Thank you for joining us here on the podcast, man, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Runaway Train Brewery in Honesdale. Check them out next time you're heading out on the Pocono Beverage Trail. PoconoBeverageTrail.com is where you can get that digital passport for free and all the info you need to enjoy what the Poconos has to offer. Thanks for listening to Pocono Mountains Podcast. We'll have a new episode each week, highlighting lots of the fun things you can experience while you're visiting the Poconos. Subscribe and leave a review and or comment on whatever platform you listen. For a warm welcome and refreshing wine, Three Hammers Winery really delivers. The Hops and Second District Brew Farm are grown right here. Bright Path Brewing is a small town craft brewery with a big flavor. Your trail awaits you. Make it whatever you want. Wineries, breweries, or distilleries. I've always wanted to craft a trail. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Visit PoconoBeverageTrail.com. We're back. Thanks for listening to Pocono Mountains Podcast. I'm Jim Hamill. Now for a listen at what's happening at another stop along the Pocono Beverage Trail. Barley Creek Brewing Company is partnering with The Leapfrog, a mobile kitchen for the Frogtown Chop House, to play wiffle ball and help a great cause. Enjoy. Hey, it's Jim Hamill, and if you ventured out on the Pocono Beverage Trail, I'm sure you've seen just how unique each and every stop is, from wineries to distilleries to even breweries like this one. But at Barley Creek Brewing Company, they have something nobody else does. It's the pint-sized park where they can play wiffle ball. And so on Tuesdays now, they've started up wiffle ball tournament with the Frogtown Chop House and Pocono Beverage Trail, and they're raising money for a good cause. Check it out. Called in the air. Right. Tails, all right, you get to pick. Uh, why don't we take the field first? All righty. Three, two, three. Hey there, TV Land. This is Trip Ravane, co-founder of Barley Creek Brewing Company. Um, we're getting together uh, tonight and every Tuesday night. What we're going to try and do is uh, get the Pocono Beverage Trail and uh, the hospitality industry together for service industry night. What we're also going to do is raise some money for um, some good causes. And the two causes that we currently have in mind is the Hospitality Scholarship Program, which is uh, supported by the Pocono Mountain Visitors Bureau, and also um, the ProStart Program, which is uh, Monroe County Career Technical Institute, which is supported by the Pennsylvania Restaurant Lodging Association. Okay, yeah, let's go! Yeah. Let's go, that's a run! Come on, boys! Uh, Trip came up to me a couple weeks ago. I got an idea, when Trip says that, we roll with it. So we had a meeting and he says, hey, why don't you bring your Leapfrog, which is our brand new mobile kitchen, which does events and weddings all over the Poconos. Why don't you bring it here every, every Tuesday night from five to eight? Let's partner with the Pocono Beverage Trail. Let's get some charities involved. You guys cook, we'll serve drinks and play some wiffle ball. It's fun all around. Wiffle ball can be the most complicated sport in the world. It's right out there with golf. You know, in theory, the wiffle ball that we're gonna be playing you're not running the bases. And you know, the wiffle ball that we're playing with the beverage trail, I like to say, um, as long as the game can be played while holding a beverage, then that's the kind of game I wanna play. 
Every team that uh, comes and plays against the field, it's a $25 entry fee. The Frog Town is going to donate a small portion of their food sales, and Barley Creek is going to donate a small portion of our beverage sales. And that's going to go into the uh, two charity funds. We're going to have Frog Town fries, which is fries topped with a little cheese sauce, some bacon. It's fantastic. Of course, Chef Lyman's famous crab cakes. We have a vegan option. Any vegans out there, we have a great vegan uh, flatbread wrap option. We have grilled shrimp skewers. We have uh, pork belly on a stick. So it's a little bit of a mix between kind of festival fair food and some good old fashioned Frog Town Chop House classics. What has happened after 2020 is it took the hospitality industry and hotel industry that was always so, hey, we know what we're doing. Hey, I know what I'm doing. Never talk to each other. Now we are a family, every single one of us. We're supposed to be uh, in the fun industry. And uh, I got to tell you, I have a lot of fun with this. And if you're not playing wiffle ball because I've got six teams playing, you could be playing cornhole. This could turn into the beverage trail Olympics as well. The Pine Size Park is the wiffle ball spot in Northeast Pennsylvania. Trip's done an absolutely incredible job. I'm on the turf, my feet feel good. Full rules, full battle, this is the place to do it. Do me a favor, grab your friends. If it's a beautiful night in the Poconos, which is every night's a beautiful night in the Poconos, come on down to the Pine Size Park, especially on Tuesdays. Pretty cool, right? So they're gonna try to raise about $2,500 each for those causes through the wiffle ball tournaments every Tuesday through October at Barley Creek Brewing Company and Pine Size Park. So check it out at barleycreek.com and show up, swing a bat, and have a beer. For PTN, I'm Jim Hamill. Wiffle ball at Pine Size Park at Barley Creek and the Runaway Train Brewery now new on the beverage trail. Both stories will premiere this coming Sunday, September 3rd, on the new Pocono Mountains magazine for September. We hope you enjoyed Pocono Mountains podcast. Please remember to subscribe and come visit us in the Pocono Mountains. Plan your trip today. Thank you.